Hey everybody, how you doing? Today we have a, uh, a special um, special series, it's really just a one video series, but we're going to show you how you fix a Fender Acoustasonic 30 amp. Now this amp came to me from a friend, uh, the symptom is no power, um, and this is a, you know, a transistor, a solid state amp, there's no tubes, uh, basically there's just a, um, a transformer in the back and it's, it's a very lightweight amp. But the problem is it's really hard to get apart. And I've searched all over the internet on how to get this thing apart and really never found anything. And then I had to do a little bit of an experimentation. So I took it apart and put it back together so I could show you how to do it. This way, if you ever want to fix one of these, you know what to do. So uh, let's take a look at the amp first. So you'll see the front panel here. Um, pretty straightforward for a fender. Um, this grill comes off here. And you've got a, uh, an 8 inch speaker and a tweeter. That's in the front. And if we flip this thing around in the back, let's turn it around. Make sure you can see that. You'll see that this, uh, this back panel kind of fits in there, but there's nothing else to take apart. Um, it's really just a back panel. Let me lower this a little bit so you can see it. Okay. So that's what the back panel looks like. Let me raise this up. There's no screws. There's nothing here that holds this thing in. So um, there's really only one way to get this thing out, and that's through the screws on top. So I'm going to raise this camera up. Okay, here we go. So this is uh, this is the top, and the way you start taking this thing apart is to remove these four screws. So let's do that first. Okay, the four screws are out. So of course we're going to take these screws and we're going to put them into a container so we don't lose them, just like so. So this is where it gets tricky because you would think that this, uh, this unit would pull right out in the front. Watch. It's stuck. It doesn't come out. And I'll tell you why it doesn't come out in a second. So let's flip this thing around. Like so. We're going to bring this camera down. Okay. And the reason why it doesn't come out is very simple. We're going to take that front grill off. The wires that come out of this chassis go through a hole in this cabinet and attach to these speakers. The only way to get the chassis out is to remove the speakers. Okay? You got that? So let's do that. Let's take the speakers out carefully. Now I have these speakers already disconnected because like I told you I've already taken this thing apart. Well, I'm just going to go through the motions for you to show you. Okay, here comes the speaker, and again, you'll see that I've got it disconnected. There's nothing connected to it. So let's put our speaker down in a safe place. It doesn't get damaged. And the same thing is true for this little tweeter here. So this tweeter, you need to take out as well. And again, I have the wires disconnected from the tweeter as well. Okay, those screws are out. Out comes the tweeter. So, I'm going to take this camera off the tripod and then do the rest for that way. So hold on one second, I'll be right back. Okay, so you'll see, if I can show you this shot, coming right out of the top here in a hole are all the wires. And here's all the wires that come out. This red 
and black goes to the 8 inch speaker. I'm sorry, this goes to the tweeter, the red and black. The white and black go to the 8 inch speaker. And the two RCA jacks go to the, um, right here, the reverb. There's a reverb box. Plugs in right here and right here. If you try to pull this out without disconnecting any of that stuff, it's not going to come out. Now when I took this thing apart, they had a big old wad of um, silicone in that hole. Let me see if I can put a flashlight there. I actually took it out. But they had a big old wad of silicone in that hole. That's what holds it in. So, um, <laughs> it's a little bit annoying and very hard to get out. So let me pull this chassis out and then I'll show you what the chassis looks like. Okay, so we have the chassis out. And you'll see back here is a transformer, right here. And uh, we're going to zoom in a little bit here on the power section. And go this way a little bit. So you'll see power comes in right here. This spot right there. Comes along here and goes to a fuse. Fuse is right here. Comes across to the power switch, which is... Let's zoom out, sorry about that getting used to this new camera setup here. I'm trying to really do it the right way. And um, goes to this power switch right here. So the first thing we're going to do is check this fuse. So let me pop the fuse out. It's not plugged in, obviously. Okay. I'm going to pull this camera back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to take our meter and check the fuse out. Put it on continuity. Open. Open fuse. Cool. All right. Let me get my fuses. I got the whole kit of fuses right here. So let me put one of those in, I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the fuse replaced. I've got the speaker connected and I've got the tweeter connected here because you never turn an amp on without a speaker. And we're gonna take the Variac and we're gonna go up and see what happens. Let's do that now. Let's turn the power switch on. Like so. Well, I just heard some noise. And if I bring the camera down here, you'll see that we have a power light. Good news. So it looks like the fuse was definitely the problem. The question is, why did it blow? So we're going to let this thing bake for a little while. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the scope and see what kind of output signal we're getting. So I'm just going to let this thing cook for just a couple of minutes. Seems to be holding its own. Alright, so I'm going to set this up on the scope and we'll take a look at the output. Be right back. Okay, let me show you how I have this set up. I have the, uh, a jack going in here connecting to these alligator clips which go to this audio generator which is set for 800 hertz and 150 millivolts. That's going into the input. Then I have my speakers coming out, going in here, into this dummy load box set for 8 ohms, which is then connected to the scope. Okay? Let me put the volume to zero. Let me set this up on the tripod and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so there's our scope. So I've got this set to zero. I've got all my uh, volumes and, and treble and bass and mids all set to zero. Let's bring the volume up. Right now we're at 4. Right now we're at 8. And we're at 10. And you'll see this thing has no breakup at all. I mean, there's not a lot of power here. It's a 30, it's a 30 watt amp. But the signal's clean, which is good. Let me bring the uh, treble up. Let me change the scale. So you'll see here, when I bring the treble all to the top, the top of that wave flattens. That's normal. 
Let me bring it back down. Let me bring base up. And you'll see I get a nice square wave when I bring up the, that's actually the mid, I'm sorry. When I bring the mid all the way up, it turns it into a nice square wave. Bring that down. Base. I get a little bit more of a square there on top. So this amp sounds like it's pretty clean actually. The other two knobs that are on here are dynamics, which is for the for the uh, <coughs> the reverb, which we're not going to test. So I would say that this amp is is pretty healthy. If I bring the treble, mid, and bass up to five, and I bring my volume to about four, let me bring it all the way down to the bottom and show you. There it goes. You'll see the breakup occurs at about seven on this amp. So that's everything at the, at the five position. So uh, that's when you can expect to get some distortion and in the sound of the amp. So right at about the seven mark, which is good. Um, so I would say that this amp is is healthy. It really was just a uh, a fuse that was blown. Um, can't imagine why. I did do a uh, a good inspection of the board, and there's no burn marks. There's no broken resistors. There's no capacitors that have uh, bulges all that stuff so uh, I would call this amp fixed so let's put it back in the case and then we'll wrap up so before I pop the uh, speakers in I've got the uh, the chassis back in the cabinet I've got this uh, this tremolo bar connected I marked everything white and red before I took it out so now we're going to put the speaker back in and you'll see that I put a, uh, a nice tie wrap here to keep the wires together so we're going to take this red wire and run it out through this hole where the tweeter goes like that so we don't lose it and then we're going to follow polarity so black goes on the negative like so white goes on the positive and we're going to mount this where it belongs in the cabinet let me grab the screws and we'll mount that in okay be very careful when you put the speaker in because you don't want to pop the cone. So we're going to do this by hand at first on the top ones so that we don't take any chances. Okay. We're not going to ram it home yet because we don't have all the screws in. Just enough to hold it. So now we're going to put the bottom screws in. And then finally the last one. Now we're going to go back and tighten these up. The reason why you tighten those up, you don't want that thing rattling. All right, you don't want to kill it, you just want to tighten it. And then the last thing we're going to do is connect this tweeter. Again, we're going to follow polarity right here. If you could see it, there's a plus sign. That means that's where our red connection goes, and our black connection goes here. We're going to pop that in. Let me grab the screws. There we go. And this is really just a piece of plastic, actually, but it's okay. I think if Leo Fender ever saw this thing, he'd roll over. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll put our grill back on. And this thing is ready to road test. <clears throat> well, let me shut this off and we'll just put a guitar in it and see what it sounds like. Be right back. Okay, here we go. So I've got my trusty guitar plugged in. We're gonna power it up. See we got a power light. We got the treble on five, mid on five, and bass on five. Let's put the reverb on and see if that works. That's 
chorus that I've got turned on there. Alright, so as you can see, she works. That does it for this uh, for this little episode. So if you want to know how to fix an Acoustasonic 30, that's how you get it apart. Take out the screws on top, clean out all that silicone that the wires run through, make your connections, remove this, you're all good. This is Ron. Thank you.